the first type of pattern I want to represent is repetition. In order, in other words, how do we represent repeating a, a value? We could, with our regular expression, let's say we wanted to look for four A's in a row, we could do this. And that would represent four A's in a row. But for long repetition, that becomes tedious really quickly. So we can transform this into A, and that's supposed to be a bracket, 4. And this just tells the regular expression engine, I want to see an A, and there better be four of them in a row somewhere in, in my pattern. And so that's, um, that's wonderful, but that is not the frequent case. The more frequent case is not an exact repetition, but some sort of, of range. So let's say we want to now represent something, and now I can't do it in a pattern very easily. I want to do something like, I want to be able to have two A's, or three A's, or four A's, all the way up to something like, uh, let's six, seven A's right here. How do we represent two A's, or three A's, or four A's, or five A's? The answer is the repetition is really going to help us because what we're going to do is we're going to, in our repetition operator, we're going to give a low and a high end value. So we do 2 comma 7 here. And that says I want to see an A and anywhere from 2 to 7 inclusive, I want that many A's to appear. And as, as you can see here, it's very difficult, especially given the operators that we've seen so far, to be able to represent more than one option unless we do something like this where we give this range uh, available to us. And so that is what can happen. Sometimes w that an upper or, or lower range may not be known. So maybe we want two A's or we want three A's, or we want four A's. Uh, put four in there. And there is no, and we just want two or more A's. What we can do is we can say, A, I want two of them, and I'm just gonna leave that number blank. And what that means is that there is no upper bound. We, we have a lower bound of two, but, but no upper bound. And the, the opposite is true. We could say, I want one A, or two A's, or uh, three A's, or whatever, up till seven A's again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we won't, don't want to stop anymore. Then what you can do uh, let me put in there to make it fully accurate, zero A's, one A, two A, three A's, all the way up there, is you can make the lower bound unspecified. So I can say I want an A, and I don't care how many of them there are, but at most there can be seven. So no lower bound here, no upper bound here, and these are all different ranges that it, it can play and and notice that these are our sets of regular expressions that we can't really represent given our current understanding of regular expressions except via this repetition operator right here uh, otherwise we would have to check against this one and this one and this one and that gets back to the whole string comparison where we have a series of if then else's that we're, we're trying to get away from. I want to point out two very important repetition operators. It is so common to have either uh, one or more that typing these four characters is seen as extra work, too much extra work. And so there is shorthand for that with a plus signal, a plus symbol. And what that plus symbol means is, 
I want one of these, or two, or three, or four, however many, because we don't specify in an upper bound. The other symbol that I'm going to introduce here is zero or more. So this becomes an optional one, and the special symbol for that is the asterisk. So if we have to have at least one, we use our plus. If it's optional, but we can have any number of them, we put a, an asterisk. So um, in concept, you could think of a, a plus as in, a, in a URL as representing, I have to have you know, at least uh, the server portion of the URL. Tell me where to find the information. And so I'm going to have pluses in there that represent the characters that represent the, the server portion of the address. But in that same URL, the path portion that might represent a file on the server is optional. Right? A totally legal URL that you could come up with uh, could be, you know, www.google. Dot com. There's no path here. There's, there is a server. And so there's probably going to be some sort of star that represents the components that follow the server name as opposed to a plus that represent the components that, uh, for the, the server name itself. And so these are hugely important uh, values. You see plus and star all over the place on the internet. Um, some they're so helpful and so minimal, you know, one character versus four characters, that a lot of people use plus and star when they actually do have an upper bound, because they don't care. It's good enough. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you follow that behavior, but I want you to know that it's out there. I know that I have a lower bound of one or zero, and so I'm going to use plus or star, and I might or might not have an upper bound, but I'm going to ignore it. Uh, regardless of what the uh, I should or, or should not be doing. So there are a lot of regular expressions that, because of that, match more than they were originally intended to match because people were a little bit sloppy because of the extreme convenience of using plus and asterisk as opposed to the squiggly brackets, lower bound, comma, upper bound, and squiggle. And, and so you need to know about these two symbols these repetition operators.